welcome one and all my name is Tavis and today today I got a bit of a different video for you see recently I made a video about tiny mix and someone asked Tavis how do you make a tiny make I was like oh well, yeah good question now if you have the skills you can use sculpture or mix from polymer clay or something I don't have that sort of skills so instead I joined the internet and the talented features of Matt Mason. Now, I asked Matt if he was okay with this and I haven't got an answer yet, so hopefully this is okay. This. But, anyway, this is the place that have supplied me with the mech models that I use for printing. And uh, as you can see, these are. As you see, they are. MVO adjacent. They're reminiscent but not an exact copy in any way shape or form. They're not like those uns unscrupulous sites that just rip the 3D models. No, no, these are actually hand sculpted models. Handmade from the ground up to look like the mix you all love. For example, you have a Marauder. Looks nice. So, this is where I started. I had a few files since before and I downloaded those. Open them up and um, then came trying to figure out the scale. This is sheet to box a 3D printing software that happens to come with my 3D printer. And um, I'm going to cheat a little bit here because I already locked up, looked up that for all intents and purposes, a mech in map scale is about half a hex or 50 meters since a hex is supposed to represent 30 meters. So I imported the tallest mech I had sitting around which is an atlas and depending on who you ask atlas sits at around 14-15 meters in game. So with this being my benchmark I now knew that I had to figure out how to make this fit in half a hex. So I took a measuring tape, measured the hex and it came to being about three centimeters. And with that mean that a mix should be about one centimeter and a half because it works out sort of. So next up. Knowing how tall the mix was supposed to be, I measured on the atlas where that was and found out that, that was about there. Around the knee height. So, next up, I duplicated the mix, went into scale, and I found that scaling up something we're supposed to be doing, scaling down roughly around 30% 30% was a good scale now this is not exact you could probably go a bit smaller, you could go a bit larger depending on what you feel like but that should be about where you are, where you are. That gives you a good indication of the size of the mech. And then you just scale everything else accordingly. Now, what comes next is the not so fun stage. Because then you have to go in and support it because otherwise you will have a very very flat mech because you print like a pancake and my version of sheet box do not have the needed settings to actually be able to auto support this one so instead we have to do this the hard way which is like this Ooh. go in and then manually put supports on every bit you kind of find and let's see if I can show an, an island layer. 
because every now and then you get an eye a layer popping out that has no support at all so you basically have to go in and do this manually now I'm gonna skate up because I'm you see here what we got here now is what is called an island that is a bit that is free floating and um, you have to support that because if you don't that thing is going to print mid-air have nothing holding it up and it's going because basically 3d printers print in reverse they start up like this layer 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 so if this layer started printing it would be printing in mid-air that's bad now of course this would be the same thing print from the other direction but generally speaking that's easier now you could reorient the mix in a different direction to just have them pop out somewhere so you have to go through this support everything and I'm not going to show you how to do that because it takes a lot of time and once you're done with that you send it to a 3d printer or you send it to a friend who has a 3d printer you, or a online printing service either way actually if it's an online printing service I'm pretty sure they want to do their own supports but anyway you do that and uh, you don't need a fancy printer for this. This is such a tiny scale that details are not really the big issue here. Now, I can tell you something right off the bat. Things like these antennas, they will not, you will not have those by the end of it. Same thing on some mechs, you have thin gun barrels. Those will most likely also break because If you've seen that video, you realize how tiny these things are. These antennas are the thickness of hair strands, strands of hair. This thing is about the size of a thumbnail. But anyway, once you're done, you have all the mechs you want, all set up, ready to be printed. You take them to your printer, and as I said before I was ranting, you don't need a good printer. The printer I have is a Mars Pro. It's the first generation Mars printer. Well, technically, it's the second generation, but anyway, quality wise, there's no difference. And since these are so tiny, print fairly quickly. The good thing with printing these in resin is that you can have as much as you want on the build plate. As, because the only thing that counts is the height, and these are not large things so mine printed in about an hour and a half I'm pretty sure that on a more modern printer you could probably get that down to half an hour or 45 minutes but mine printed in a, about a uh, an hour and a half which is still pretty good now I'm gonna put in the same disclaimer as everyone else does when you're dealing with resin resin is toxic do not get it in your in your eyes in your mouth on your skin use gloves, be in a well-ventilated area, or preferably not in the same room as the printer at all. But if you have to be in the same room as the printer, keep it well-ventilated. If you just print one off, it's probably not an issue if you print a lot, you're gonna start feeling the health issues after a while. Shortness of breath, lungs going to heck, could develop an allergic reaction to the resin. So, be safe. It's a chemical. It's not healthy at all. But yeah. So once you're done with this, you hopefully get a build plate full of tiny mix. And that, my friend, that is how you do it. You download the file, scale it down to about 30% or 40%. You, you do you. Now, of course, if you don't have bases, hex bases laying around, you can just print those too. There are plenty of files out there that are hex bases, or you can just go into CAD software and make your own. I'm not going to show that now. Again, if that's something people are interested in, I can show you how you do it, but we're going to leave that now. Anyway, now you know how to get your mix up and running. If you have any further questions about how to do this, I am uh, all ears. And as I mentioned before, if you want a good source for nice solid mix, I would recommend giving Matt a peek because 
this is a good mix. But there are other out there too. You can just search for them. And um, basically, make your mix about an inch and a half, not inches, centimeters, but a centimeter and a half to two centimeters, and you'll be good. And uh, yeah, until next time, stay safe, be kind, and do do play fair. Bye.